Well, good morning, Texoma, and thanks for joining us. I'm Ashley Fitzwater, and this morning we are talking about <laughs> the 2013 Hotter Than Hell 100. It is the 32nd year for the biggest 100-mile bike ride in the nation, and I love that. It's something we are so proud of. It's right here in Texoma, and obviously a big part of numerous lives. So joining me with the very latest this morning is Julie Ayers. She is the media representative for Hotter Than Hell 100. And also mm -hmm. Roby Christie, he is the Hotter Than Hell 100 chairman. And of course, a face that many of you recognize and associate whenever we're talking <laughs> about Hotter Than Hell 100. So mm -hmm. we appreciate both of you being here this morning. And we're excited to learn all about this year's big ride and big race. So just in case people aren't familiar with how this all got started before I get too far ahead of myself, yeah. It brings so much money to the area. It just brings people from all over the country right here from something that started as wanting to celebrate Wichita Falls history, correct? You bet. <laughs> uh, the, the, the mayor at that time was Gary Cook, and, and he, uh, he came and asked if, uh, if I would help with an event that would kick off the centennial of um, Wichita Falls. Well, uh, no one had a clue what we would kick the centennial off with, but uh, we had just started a bicycle club. And uh, so I went to the club. I said, all right, uh, we've got this opportunity. Been asked to come up with an event that would uh, tell the story of pioneers who came here. They uh, had a lot of tenacity. They did things hard. And um, well, I, I would propose that we do a bike ride. And one of the, the committee members uh, said, well, we could do a 100-mile bike ride. I said, oh, well, hold the show. <laughs> um, you know, there aren't that many 100-mile bike rides. There's obviously a good reason for that. They said, oh, no, we can do this. Uh, and I, uh, so the, we discussed that and um, decided that we were going to do 100 miles and 100 degrees to celebrate the 100th birthday of, <laughs> of Wichita Falls. Well, then people say, well, where did you get this name? Right. <laughs> well, during the same conversation, um, Mark Davis uh, said, well, you know, it's going to be hotter than hell. <laughs> and then he got this, he kind of went pale. <laughs> and he said, you know, that needs to be the name. Long discussion, talking about how people might misperceive uh, our intentions. We chose to go with hotter than hell. And we're really glad we did. Uh, that's been one of the biggest things uh, that has contributed to our success. People want to come do, as one lady said, that year when we went out to... Uh, tell people about the ride she said I just need to do that killer ride <laughs> so, um, a killer ride just draws people I guess but a great name and a great community uh, we went out the bicycle club newly formed we all visited people in Oklahoma and Texas and Louisiana and Kansas and we took our bikes out and rode with clubs and handed out brochures wore t-shirts um, that said training for hotter than hell hundred and uh, before long we started getting a lot of people in the ride we had anticipated uh, 500 or so the biggest ride in the country at the time was in Colorado Springs it was 400 we thought okay we can beat that that's not that many <laughs> boy, and boy. so we we planned on 500 <laughs> we ordered enough labels uh, bib numbers uh -huh. for everyone and um, the night before the ride we had gone way past 500 wow. and so we didn't have numbers for anyone the registration committee uh, went out and bought paper plates and oh, safety pins wow. and they made numbers <laughs> and people finished that ride with paper plates and numbers on them and they were proud of those numbers. I love it. That is just amazing. It's such a great story. It's such a inspirational story for Texoma, I think, too, how, you know, something just to celebrate who we are is turned into something that's so big for our community. And, you know, it continues to celebrate our community, I yes. think, year after year, bring in money. It truly, Texoma, is something to be proud of, and it's just such a great thing for our community. Can we talk a little bit about the schedule of events? Because I know we can't get to everything, and there's already a list online <laughs> if you want to get on there and start planning out your weekend. Because it is truly not just that Saturday. There's a lot going on even beforehand. Right. We, um, well, we start on Thursday with our consumer show with over 90 vendors that has grown significantly over the years and it's a lot of fun. We have a new event on Friday evening for the little ones under 12. It's um, Rugrats on the Wichita. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a new one. It is a free event um, and we're really excited about that and it goes all the way through Sunday. We have 
different off-road races. We've got a, a half marathon, a 10K run, something for everybody. Roby, is it neat to see how things are added every year and there's something that's yeah. growing? It, it's been important, I think, to the growth of the ride that it not be stagnant. And we were the, uh, the first bicycle event to add a consumer show. Uh, pretty soon after that, mm -hmm. other bicycle events tried to add consumer shows. They just could never get any traction. The race, uh, we started out as just a ride and we added the USCF race and then we added additional races, criteriums, which are closed loop races within a uh, seven tenths of a mile loop and really great opportunity to watch people ride really fast. Um, they go through corners uh, so fast you can't imagine. And a, a number of years ago, uh, Eddie Hill, he's our local uh, fast car driver. Yes. Uh, he was uh, leading a race, and it was his first time to ever lead a race. He had a very high-powered Corvette, and everybody had said, okay, you need to make sure you leave enough room between yourself and these bicycles, or, you know, they'll catch you. And he said, no, not going to happen. <laughs> well, um, the very first turn, he slowed down to make his turn. The bikes were not slowing down. They went through that 90-degree turn at 40 miles an hour. And they passed him. <laughs> passed so, the Corvette. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so he left a little more room in there. But they go that fast. Wow. They're really quick. Uh, we've added uh, the off-road events. And uh, we started with off-road, uh, just an off-road ride. It's now an off-road ride and race. And we've added the, the races that, um, where people run on the trail. So, gosh, it's a, it is a weekend full of uh, activities that people can enjoy participating in, helping with, or um, watching. And the weekend of the 24th is the weekend everyone needs to mark on their calendar, August 24th. And, you know, go ahead and mark it now. We're telling you now because it is going to be a big weekend. We want you to get prepared. We're going to talk a little bit about training, nutrition, heat safety, the BMX track, the different bike trails, of course, host homes, how you can volunteer, how you can get involved, as she was talking a little about, about the pride, you know, of Wichita Falls. So there's so many things, so many different parts. There's truly something for everyone to do, you know, whether you're riding or watching or cheering them on or just helping in general. So don't go anywhere, Tech Summer. We need to take another quick break, but we just want to say thank you, Roby, for coming and, and for kickstarting this idea and for keeping it going. I just think it's a great thing for our well, community. thank you, Ashley. Absolutely, and stick with us, everyone. We will be right back with much more. This Hotter in Hell 100 coverage is brought to you by Four Stars Auto Ranch. Welcome back to Inside Texoma. Once again, we are talking about the Hotter in Hell 100. It is coming up August 24th. The countdown is officially on. And now we are going to talk a little bit more about those dirt events, the different trails, the different things that people can, of course, get involved in. And joining us now with the latest is Sandy Monson. She is the Executive Director of Streams and Valleys. So thank you, Sandy, for being here Hi, this morning. Hi, thanks so much for having me down again. Absolutely. And there's a lot of good stuff in front of us here. So we're going to get to all of this and the neat jerseys and the awesome prizes and the things that you can go out and purchase and help support this and get ready for the ride. And But Sandy, first of all, We've heard a lot in the news recently about the BMX track. That's going to be a neat thing and a big part of Hotter and Hell pretty soon, correct? That's right. It probably won't be a part this year because our target open date for the BMX track is August 10th. But uh, next year, look, look for it to be included in some of the events. It's really fun. There's this huge starting hill that's about 15 feet tall. And you start up there, and there's a gate. And the gate drops down, and then you plummet down this oh, huge wow. hill. And you go over several bumps, and then there's this really steeply banked turn. I didn't know they were going to be that steep and it's about 15 feet tall and you ride your bike on this really steep turn and then go over more bumps. It's going to be so much fun. You get to go really fast and you get to catch air on the bumps. Oh wow. <laughs> well I know you've just grabbed a lot of people's attention out there. Now me, I'm going to stick to just watching but you know <laughs> when you say thrills and fast and air then I know you know there's a target audience out there that is ready to come already so that's definitely going to be exciting and something else of course is the Wichita mountain bike trail it's about uh, 12 miles long it's a it's a one-way circular trail but we use the dirt trail on Hotter and Hill weekend for the mountain bike races which are on Friday and this year we've expanded the mountain bike race so it's all day Friday oh. And then we also have our half marathon and 10K run on Sunday morning. And that is also the beginning and the end of the triple threat. 
The triple threat is the mountain bike race on Friday, the 100 miles on the road on the Hotter Than Hell on Sunday, <laughs> single bike, no tandems, that would be cheating, and then uh, you get to run a half marathon on that same trail that you rode your mountain bike on the next day. And everyone that completes that, no matter how fast or slow they are, get one of those really awesome wooden trophies. It says, I survived the triple threat. And I think you deserve a trophy after doing something like this triple threat. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, just one of those alone is impressive to me. And Absolutely. then just to do them all, how many people do you usually have that complete that? Well, it's always been limited before because we always had our mountain bike race just kind of start in one big massive group. Oh, but sure. This year we're racing mountain bikes all day long starting wow, at 10 o'clock. We have the potential to have 600 or 800 people in our triple threat. Wow. It's, it's going to be amazing. There are going to be a lot of tired people on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> they are going to be sleeping well. I hope they all take that Monday off then if they are going to be <laughs> involved in this triple threat. What a great thing again though for our community and you know bring more people in, more interest. It's neat to see you know how this just keeps expanding. Um, anything else that's new this year that people can get involved in? Oh, the Rugrats on the Wichita race. We're so excited to offer yet another way to get little kids involved in fitness. So on a Friday afternoon after our Cat 3 mountain bikers clear the start line, uh, we're going to have a free event for 12 and under kids. They have to be able to ride a bicycle. They have to have a parent on premises. We're going to have a really short little mountain bike race, about a mile and a half, maybe two miles. They're going to get to go up some steep hills, ride through the woods, go down some steep hills. There's going to be lots of volunteers to help them. And every one of those little babies that finish gets the same finisher medal that, that the adults get. Oh, wow. It's going to be really, really fun. Why did you think that was so important? For this to be added this year oh we need to get more little kids out on the out on the mountain bike trail when i'm out on the mountain bike trail riding or running i don't see near enough little kids yeah saw some little deer this weekend but no <laughs> little kids <laughs> that is going to be so neat and how cute to watch and what time does that kick off the rugrats will start about 4 30. about 4 30. i know there's lots of things people can go buy and mm -hmm. help support as well these jerseys are, are online at the hotter and hill store there's a link on our website and we have a lot of different things on uh, at the hotter and hill store well sandy thank you so much and um i know just another big important member part of the hotter and hell team this year i i can't say this enough it just gives a, a broader spectrum for everybody to get involved and Sandy's got all of our dirt under control. We call her our <laughs> dirt queen. So <laughs> um, she, she strives all year long to make sure that, that we're adding events that are able to get the whole family involved right. and, and something for everybody. I love that. Such an important thing. So love to see that it's growing in that area as well. Thank you, Sandy, for being here. And don't go anywhere, Texoma. We will be right back with much more on Inside Texoma. This Hotter in Hell 100 coverage is brought to you by Four Stars Auto Ranch. Welcome back to Inside Tech Somo. Once again, we are talking about the Hotter in Hell 100, and joining us now with much more is Bikin' Mike Kill and also Dr. Keith Williamson. He is the Hotter and Hell Medical Director, also the Medical Director at Midwestern State University at the Vincent Medical Center. And we just appreciate both of you taking time to be here today. We're glad to be here. Happy to be here with you. And jumping right in, these two men, I understand, Julie, they just bring a lot to the table whenever it comes, again, to making this happen. There are just numerous people involved to making this go off without a hitch. Can you tell us just a little bit about them and brag on these two and really what <laughs> they mean to the Hotter and Hell 100? Well, that is certainly easy to do. I'm not sure how we pulled it off before they came along, but they <laughs> surely are an integral part in making it happen. Dr. Keith here has published three papers from his research um, that he's done at the Hotter and Hell 100. Um, has been a committee member with us for um, what, 12, 12 years, years now yes. wow. and um, has been a writer since 1996 and then back in Mike um, has uh, been a cycling coach since his very first Hotter Than Hell 100 in 1987. Yes ma'am. Wow and now he has his own cycling facility where he trains people in Plano, Texas. Yes, ma'am. And comes here to help train our riders before the event. So we're wow. pretty blessed to have both of them. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. And they, today, their role right here, Texoma, it's a little bit of an advantage for you and an insight for you if you're preparing. 
They're going to talk about training, nutrition, and that all important, of course, heat safety. So jumping right into that, and then maybe we can hear a little bit more about your personal stories. But I want to jump right into why you're here for Tech Summit this morning, and just starting with training. Is now an okay time to start training, or if you're continuing training, any extra tips for anyone? Well, I think the I think the first step for anybody is to get on a bike, start riding. There you go. So <laughs> if you're already riding when you get to today, you can look at what am I doing right now. You know, if you're already up to the hundred kilometer distance or further, you're going to be safely in that zone where you could get ready for the hundred mile and do well. And to me, doing well means you finish standing up on your own power <laughs> and speaking coherently. So, you know, you, you're not crawling across the line, but doing well. If you're not riding that far, you need to be reasonable about what kind of distance you're doing now so that you're not expecting yourself to do too much. Because as we'll talk about later, the heat is the thing that's draining the most calories out of riders right now beyond what they spend pedaling. So that heat acclimation to try to build endurance and ability and get used to the heat, that's a little bit too much to ask. Right. So just a little bit of graduated. And that's the great thing about the 100 in hell. It's not just a 100 mile ride. You've got the 75 mile route option. You've got the 62 mile route option. You've got the 50, you've got the 25, you've got the 10. So there are a lot of different distances you can ride and still be a part of that big start on Scott Avenue with the flyover and the cannon. Besides just getting on the bike, are there other exercises that maybe are helpful to do that will give you a leg up whenever it comes to riding that day? Well, cross training for cycling is always beneficial and helpful. Whether you're doing a calisthenic style program like a PX90 or something that intense, a cross training program to develop core strength and stability because of the posture and positioning on a bicycle, that's extremely helpful. Uh, another thing to look at for cross training is yoga, uh, those types of activities that are stretching of the body and helping the joint capsules because we spend so much time contracting the muscles thousands of times with pedal revolutions and things that we need to stretch those muscles out as well. Not as important for people in your age bracket as in mine. So, and we do see in the hotter than hell that there are a lot of those 50 plus year old riders that are out there riding. So they need to pay attention to that cross training. Great advice. Now, whenever it comes to nutrition, you know, there's the big spaghetti dinner that everybody loves and you, you always hear about the, having that calorie boost because you are burning a lot. What do we need to be keeping in mind now though, whenever it comes to nutrition and preparing for the hotter than hell hundred? I'll take that one first, and Mike can probably help me out in a minute. But a good healthy diet is what every athlete needs, and the baseline would be about 30% fat. And for endurance athletes, maybe 40% carbohydrate. That is your energy and your recovery. And the rest should be in protein. You have to attend to your diet, your hydration, and when you're working in the heat every day, your salt intake as well. The other thing about nutrition is people forget that all three food groups are important in all three meals. And quite frequently we'll hear about cyclists who will talk about carbo loading the night before mm -hmm. the ride and you don't want to miss out on the fats and the carbs and the protein in that meal. Just getting carbs is kind of like building a fire out of kindling. Mm -hmm. I need to have some logs in there as well where the fats come from and because I'm destroying so much muscle I need some protein in there to help the muscle health too. Absolutely. Another big thing, heat safety, and it's appropriately named Hotter Than Hell 100. I mean, the heat is on when you're out there, and it makes things, you're right, just standing out there alone is exhausting in yes. the heat. So yes. add the whole pedaling to the mix, and it, it can be dangerous. There's several forms of heat disease that we see every year at the Hotter Than Hell. Everything from a little swelling in the ankles called heat edema to people who pass out mm -hmm. heat syncope. But more serious heat disease as well, heat exhaustion. Uh, and the concern is always there about heat stroke. Exercising in the heat drains all your resources faster. Your body fluid, your body salt, your body energy stores, and the ability of the muscles to control the contraction. When you are not ready for the distance you're attempting, under the conditions you're attempting, you'll experience heat exhaustion and cramps and be unable to successfully complete it and not have a good experience, as Mike says, finish standing up. Yeah. We'll be peeling you off your bike and putting you in a cot. Uh, nobody wants that. No. <laughs> Don't ride out aggressively. 
right out at a soft to moderate pace. And then make sure that you're hydrated coming in. Make sure that you're well fed coming in. Make sure you didn't skip breakfast. But in that first two hours, we find that the cyclists that eat 200 to 250 calories an hour in those first two invariably do better in that four to seven hour range. I can fake it a little while, but I think Keith will even tell you that zone after Hell's Gate, so many riders work so hard to get to Hell's Gate and then run out of gas in the first 10 miles after Hell's Gate. One thing that's very difficult to manage for some riders is hydration. Mm -hmm. And you'll hear over and over, drink as much fluid as you possibly yeah. can. That is a mistake. The most seriously ill people we see at the Hotter Than Hell 100 are water intoxicated. Mm -hmm. They have gained weight over the course of a six hour bike ride and it depletes their sodium to such an extent that the brain swells, they have seizures and they wake up in the hospital intensive care unit. So exactly as Mike said, start well hydrated and drink according to thirst. Don't force down fluid if you, if you aren't feeling it. Wow, that's great advice. Things you don't think about. You do think, keep drinking because we don't want to dehydrate. Well, thank you both so much again. We appreciate your time and all that you do, um, not only for the Hotter Than Hell 100, but our community as well. We appreciate it. And we need to take another quick break, but Julie and I will be right back with much more on the Hotter Than Hell 100. So don't go anywhere, text home. This Hotter Than Hell 100 coverage is brought to you by Four Stars Auto Ranch. Welcome back to Inside Texoma. Once again, we are talking about the Hotter Than Hell 100, the big date, August 24th. And now we want to move into a little bit about how you can get involved. Here joining us with the latest is Cynthia Laney. She is the Hotter Than Hell 100 volunteer coordinator and also Lindsay Greer. She is with the director of Wichita Falls Conventions and Visitors Bureau and here to talk some numbers and how sure. this really impacts our community. But Cynthia, I'd like to just kind of start with you. And, you know, we really have learned that the volunteers are the heart of this and they're exactly. what makes this happen. Well, the whole organization are volunteers yeah. from the steering committee on down. So this is definitely a volunteer effort for the betterment not only of our riders and to do those things for the people coming into Wichita Falls, but also for Wichita Falls as a whole. Year after year, you continue to come back. So oh, yes. obviously <laughs> you see that this is an important part of our community. It, it must mean a lot to you. What, what keeps you coming back every year? One of the main things is working with the people who come in. Uh, we're at the front desk checking in all of our volunteers and everything. So that's a great avenue to visit with people that you don't see but yeah. once a year. And then whenever you visit with people that you have seen last year at the race and the year before that, and they keep coming back and they stop to say hello and carry on a conversation. How's the family? How's the kids? What are you, know, what are you doing? And it's those relationship building aspects of not only the volunteers, but the riders that just absolutely make my heart smile. I love it. It's like the heart of volunteering anyways. You yes, know, it those is. Relationships. And we plug you in where you want to go. There's everything that starts with the pre-registration packets that you can help give out, the late registration for people who have not registered online and they register the day before or the day of the event. We have people coming in at 645 on Saturday morning because they want to get there and register to be ready for the event that starts at 7 o'clock. <laughs> but um, we have all of those volunteers. Then we have people who are in the trade show that work the sales booth. We have people that are working all over. By the time you add the rest stop volunteers and everything, there's over 4,000 people who work this event. Wow. Another great way is a host home. Host homes is something that started several years ago when we just flat ran out of hotel rooms and um, just had some about 25 families we started with um, the first year that hosted people into their homes, whether it be an extra bedroom or spare room on your den floor, a rental property that's vacant right now, um, a mother-in-law suite, anything that you've got available. It can be everything from one night um, and no meal to three nights and meals with the family. <laughs> Whatever it is you're willing to do is what we want you to participate in. And let us know what your preferences are. The riders do the same. We match you accordingly so that it's a great experience for everybody. Um, but we have over 200 participating wow. now. And those are just the ones that still register with us because we've heard some amazing stories of families who have made lifelong 
friendships with writers. And that just shows the true hospitality of this community once Absolutely. again. Absolutely. And what makes this work? I mean, mm -hmm. without the rooms, without a place to stay, right. maybe some of them couldn't come. And Lindsay, it's important they all come, right? Because this Absolutely. is making a big impact on our Absolutely. community. <laughs> of course, you know, most, the, most of the year we are just really focused on putting folks in our hotels, but Hotter and Hell is unique in itself and that um, we don't care. We want them in RVs, we want them in host homes, we want them in hotels. As long as they're coming to Wichita Falls, then we are excited because that's what affects, you know, our, our economic impact on the community. So we did a study a couple of years ago. Um, we had been kind of alternating every few years and doing a survey, um, but with, thanks to technology, we finally got, got wise and uh, did an email survey to all of the participants that had registered for Hotter and Hell. This was 2010 when we did this. Um, and we got nearly 500 responses back. So it doesn't sound like a lot, but when you look at, you know, that's a, most results in most surveys that you do, you get, you know, maybe, maybe 100. So we were really pleased to get 500 responses back, and it was a really good sampling of, of the participants that were here for Hotter and Hell. So we did a lot of number crunching and things like that, and, um, and determined, of course, 2010 was, was a record year for Hotter and Hell, but um, the overall economic impact with those people that were coming into town was about 8.3 million. Um, that does include hotel lodging. That does include uh, these folks spending money at the consumer show and, mm -hmm. and folks spending um, you know, money in our restaurants and filling out, you know, they ride bikes to town, but those bikes are on the back of vehicles mm -hmm. when they come and they're um, filling up at gas stations and things like that. So th it is a humongous impact for us over a very you know, short period of time. Mm -hmm. it, it has definitely been something that has, has put Wichita Falls on the map and, and given us a namesake. So, Is this one of the biggest things of the year for our city? I mean, are, are there other things that compare to this? You know, Hotter and Hell is definitely the biggest thing I think that happens um, for Wichita Falls. Not to discredit any of the other events. We sure. have so many positive events from the TO Golf Tournament and Ranch Roundup, uh, the Oil Bowl, mm -hmm. um, even just our youth baseball and tennis tournaments that go on and things like that. Um, but by far, this is definitely the biggest event that we have in Wichita Falls. As Julie said, it it fills up every single hotel room that we have, not only in Wichita Falls, but you know, in Burke Burnett, Henrietta, and within an hour or two drive of Wichita Falls. So um, it definitely is a, is a big impact um, on the community and, and by far one of the biggest things that we have here. We are going to be sitting down with Hotter and Hell 100 with the organizers again coming up as we get closer to the race. So make sure you stay tuned for that. And again, get involved. I think that's the big thing to take away right now. Start training and get involved and prepare for the August 24th. We want to say thanks for joining us, Tex Hummel. We hope you have a wonderful day. As always, we'll see you back here next Sunday morning for another look inside Texoma.